I have the most fabulous needle felting tutorial today. When you cross a pumpkin and a gnome, you end up with one of these gorgeous little creatures, a numpkin. Yeah, so that is what we're gonna be working on. We're gonna be working on getting a really perfectly shaped hat, which is really the crux of this. I really wanted to spend some time on the hat and make sure that we've got perfection in all those finishes. So it's really um, about, you know, creating a, a different technique, say to the, the, the crooked hat that you see here, which is hollow inside. This is, this is a firm, fully filled hat. So I am using um, a length of carded wool. Wool top is fine as well. I've got this beautiful, bright sort of teal color and we are bringing out our needle felter's uh, best friend, which is the humble wooden barbecue skewer. I'm using a 38 star needle and I've just got my soft 12 mil um, wool mat here. And you could use a multi tool if you want, but really for the main part of, of this project, you will just be using one needle. There's no need for any uh, fancy equipment. So we're gonna create a cone shape and we're going to wrap that around the skewer. So keeping um, the wool really firm and close to that skewer, hold your fingers close, just felt, just pull a little bit around and then just tack it on with the needle just so it holds. There's hardly really any felting going on in this part of the project. And then if you can, turn the skewer because it's much easier to handle doing it that way rather than turning the wool. I mean, I will swap about, but generally try and use the skewer. And that is why we use a wooden skewer because it holds the wool, you know, it sticks to it really well. Keep that wool flat. The trick is do not let the wool twist. That's really important. We want a nice, neat finish. And then when you've got most of the way up the skewer, then felt a little more just to hold that wool together. You're doing nothing more than that. And we are creating a cone shape, like a Christmas tree. In fact, you could use this to create beautiful needle felted Christmas trees, but this is going to be our, our gnome hat. And so what we're doing is we're working our way back down the skewer now and as we do this backwards and forwards we're going to build up the bottom and taper off the top so we want it nice and wide at the bottom but we're actually making the hat in two parts so don't worry about the neatness of the very base of this hat it doesn't matter it's going to be covered up I found um, that the best way to get a perfect finish was to add a, a, another part but we'll come to that in a little while I messed around with this for a while and, and found this was the, the, the best way, really. So we're aiming again, make sure there's no air. You want it nice and firm, pull it tight, keep it flat and work back up the skewer. Again, we're creating that nice cone shape. And don't worry about any lumps and bumps at this stage. This is all going to be covered up. We haven't even got close to finishing yet, but just make sure that every now and then, you tack it down with your felting needle to make sure that wool holds and just pull off um, the end and just felt that down. We've, we've got to a part now where we don't really want to add any more to the tip of this hat, not at this moment. We will in a little while, but not right at this moment. We're now going to focus on really extending that base. As you can see, I'm using my needle diagonally. So that means that, you know, I'm getting across the top of the wool rather than into the center. We, um, we're just sort of flattening down that top layer so it's nice and felted. I'm taking my wool again. Don't need to split it, you might need to, that's up to you, but I want to really sort of extend this base now. So I'm just focusing on this bottom bit, just creating some wick so we get that nice cone shape. And you can see that's building up really well now. Wrap it around a few times, felt with your needle to hold it in place. The reason we use a 38 for this project, again, it's, it's my go-to needle, but when you're working with wire or wood or anything that could cause the needle to bend or break, a 38 star is really robust and will take quite a few knocks. Anything finer than that, and you're going to find the needle will either bend or break. I've got some loose wool at the bottom there, but that's okay, we're going to deal with that in a minute. So it looks a really odd shape, fine, don't worry about that. Let's just get it felted down. Again, working diagonally up towards the tip of the hat and you can see that wool is flattening and it's also moving towards the, the, the pointy bit. So we want you know, a nice sort of line that, that is, is, goes from the tip and then widens at the base 
but in as a gradual process and that's what we're doing now now the hat that i've done previously is a hollow hat just created with a triangle and it's much quicker but this is the best way to get that perfect finish when you look at all those fabulous gnomes that you see i found that this is my favorite way of, uh, and it's an easy way it just takes a bit more time it's not difficult um, but it just takes a little bit of extra time but it is so worth it when you see the results so those soft edges that are at the base of the hat i'm sort of bringing those underneath to the base and i'm now firming up the base so i'm going straight in and i'm creating that nice flat base and you can see that really starting to neaten up now this hat's a bit short so i'm going to add um, a little extra length on soon but i'm also going to firm it and roll it in my hands just to, to smooth it out and that will also lengthen it if you do it um, you know, for, for some time. And then when you've rolled it in your hands, go back, have a look, see if there's any sort of lumps and bumps you want to neaten up and just check. And as you can see, I'm not really happy with the length of it. I want you know, more of a point because I need it to bend over. I'm going to attach an acorn to mine. So I'm just going to start at the top and this is easier than just trying to do it all in one go because it all ends up in a big lump otherwise so you know do it bit by bit you don't need to do it all in one go so keep it turning felt it just as you did at the start but now we're just working towards the tip and keeping it really narrow and really firm keep it tight as you can see that wool is flat in between my finger and my thumb important don't let it twist because that is when you will lose the shape and pull it off when you think you've got to a point where that's enough and I think I have here just turning it around between my fingers now because that mats and sticks the wool to itself um, a carded wool sticks really well to itself for this kind of project a, a wool top does as well but a carded wool even more so because it's got much shorter fibers now I'm working from the top down I'm pushing in at the tip as you could see because I want to really make sure that is nice and firm and we want a seamless finish at the top there. So I'm working down, I'm now working on any sort of lumps and bumps, any bits of air, any soft areas. And as you can see there, it's a little bit lumpy. I'm not even gonna bother trying to felt that. I'm gonna pop a little bit of wool there. There's this, it kind of sort of, it narrows where it shouldn't. So just add some more wool, it's so easy. To, to rectify any issues you see. As you can see, immediately problem sorted. Pull the wool off and continue again. Keep felting, you really want that hat nice and smooth. That tip's really important, that point, because you know it's going to be a focal area of the hat. It's going to sort of hang over, but so it needs to be firm. We're not using any wires. This will be pulled off the skewer so it needs to be really firm so that you can bend it over without it collapsing on itself. And that is why the wooden barbecue skewer is perfect for the job. You have a very tiny hole right through the center which doesn't affect the integrity of the hat in any way whatsoever. And it allows you to really grab hold of that wool and get it all firmed up, which can be quite, quite tricky if you're using wire. And there's just no need for wire with this particular project. In fact, with most projects, there's no need for wire, but there is another tutorial on that and um, you can find that in um, the playlist section on my channel, How to Needle Felt with Wire. Here I am again, rolling it in the hands. Your hands are amazing tools. One of the you know, best things you can use. We, we use our hands a lot in needle felting. And as you can see, I'm really um, defining that point now. I want that really firm. That's really important. Otherwise, it's just going to sag and not bend and hold itself. And I'm really happy with that. That's looking really nice. So take it off the skewer and then just continue to felt through again now, just to really firm it up. And you can give it another roll in your hands if it needs it to really firm up that tip. You want that point, as I said, that tip of that hat to be nice and firm because that is actually going to sort of bend over and it's really important that it holds and doesn't collapse. So even if you want to put something a little bit more weighty than a, a, an acorn on a needle felted acorn, you know, it would still hold. So just continue, fill in any areas where you feel like it's looking a little bit misshapen. Just keep working with that needle 
until you are happy with the finish. Again, go back to that tip, really focus on that. And you can see how that point now has really developed and it's looking more like a gnome hat, which is going to sit on top of our pumpkin. The pumpkin you can make in a separate tutorial. I'm not gonna show you to make a pumpkin here. It takes 20 minutes. It's the easiest tutorial in the world. So I will pop the link for that in the description so you can make your own needle felted pumpkin as well. Now, as I said, we're making the hat in two parts. So what I want to do is create a really soft edge to the base and really widen it at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying two thin layers of the same carded wool, folding it in half and then felting, keeping the fold free and felting where the two pieces join together because where it folds is going to form the, the base, the brim of the hat and it's going to create a really beautiful neat finish that is sort of untouched and unfelted and that is what we are aiming for, something ju that just looks perfect in its finish. And then you can roll it over again. You can attach it to the hat at this point, but I am just going to go to my 40 star needle, which is a little bit finer. I've rolled it over again. And can you see how that edge now, it's got that really nice soft finish. And that's really all you need to do before we attach it to the hat. We've got those nice loose edges, which are going to sort of disappear into the hat when we felt them in. So lay the strip of wool on the base of your hat and it's too long for the hat. We want that. To, that's what we want. We want it to overlap and just wrap it around the base of the hat, slightly um, protruding from the actual base of the hat that you've just felted and work in a diagonal angle. Again, you can use your 38 star, but I'm using a 40 triangle because it's finer now and I really don't want to see any needle marks. And I'm working diagonally, as you can see, again, makes a massive difference, makes a, you know, creates a really smooth finish. And I'm needle felting towards the point of the hat because I really want that to blend in with the sides. And you can always go over at the end. If you're still not happy with that finish, you can just wrap a really thin layer of carded wool around the whole piece, which would sort out any problems. So if you're not happy when you've finished, then you can do that. And at the base, just bring it under and just gently felt it in as well, just so it holds. Check it against your pumpkin, see how it's going to sit, because it's really important that we can see this pumpkin when it's finished. We want to be able to see, you know, both pieces really well. So we don't want a hat that sort of overlaps the entire pumpkin top. And again, just keep working. So again, it's just taking a little bit of time turn it upside down, flatten that base and make sure it's even and bring those edges in. And as you can see, as you're bringing those edges in, you're creating an even neater finish. You're not touching the edge that is going to be visible. Everything is on the base and it's inside and it's not going to be seen. And look, you can use your fingers to create the rim of the hat. Instantly, you've created that beautiful finish and just keep working. Make sure those edges are nice and smooth. This is an important part where you don't want any lumps and bumps. Doesn't matter about the inside underneath, we're not going to see that. So use that to create that really nice finish. Make your pumpkin nice and plump. Check how your hat's going to sit and you can see looking top down how that is, is the pumpkin is visible from the top of the hat all the way around. And I'm just going to just sort of fold and bend the tip, as you can see, which is what we're going to add our needle felted acorn to, which is just such a gorgeous little finish. And the acorns, you can make them in a few minutes. So easy. There is actually, I'll put a, a, another link in the description for the acorns because it's the easiest tutorial ever. I say the pumpkin tutorial is the easiest tutorial in the world for needle felting. The acorn is as well. That's the joy of needle felting. It's, it's lots of little simple, simple elements that have been brought together to create you know, one wonderful piece. Now I'm going to add a little bit of contrast here just to the base of the gnome hat. You can do this now, or you can do this when the hat's on the pumpkin, it doesn't matter. But I've got this beautiful sort of, it's, it's like a burnt orange and red and pink carded wool. And 
I thinned it out so it's barely wispy because you just want an accent. You don't want blocks of colour. It's absolutely what you don't want. You really want this nice, delicate finish with just the gorgeous contrast. And of course, the pinks and the reds and the oranges all look wonderful together, especially against this really bright blue, sort of this teal colour and just work all the way around. I'm going to thin it out more than it is at the moment. It's a bit thick, but I'm sort of laying it down. But can you see how I'm barely even felting that onto the hat? It's it's just, I'm just literally tacking it on just so it holds. Remember, these are not toys. They're not supposed to be handled a lot. So once they're up, they should be left. You know, they're not for the kids to play with, which is why, you know, you could get away with not really um, doing a lot of felting at this point just so you want it to hold and we'll use our needle as well to tease out those ends so they kind of disappear up the length of the hat and can you see now how that is really really coming together I'm going to pull that off there because there's too much as I said we want that to really sort of disappear so it's you know you it's barely there when it when it comes to the the tip of where the wool finishes you don't really you know want to notice too much of a finish it kind of just wisps away gently and you can do that with your needle quite easily just drag your needle up against the wool pull off any bits that are, are, are sticking out or felt them in just so we've got this beautiful contrast And then go around and just felt again any bits that are kind of just sticking up just again must be diagonal with that needle i'm using my 40 star because it's finer and it's a little bit easier on the wool it doesn't show the needle marks and i'm just felting up towards the tip of the hat now you don't need to do this but i really like this contrast i used a green in the first one that i made which was really nice a nice bright green which really contrasted well but um i do love this so i'm going to pop an acorn now i've made these gorgeous needle felted acorns like i said so easy to make description you'll find the link to make these acorns um they're absolutely gorgeous they take about i don't know five minutes each to make so you can make a beautiful display of these but i'm popping it on here no sewing needed at all in this project, as with nearly all needle felting projects. And I'm just gently felting the point of that hat through the stalk of that acorn, which is also wool. So they both stick together beautifully. And there it is, just hanging there, lovely. Rearrange the hat. And as you can see, that sits beautifully. And there's not a lot of weight. And that is going to look fabulous find the um what you want to be the front of your pumpkin the best bit you know it'll all look pretty good so it probably won't matter but look for the part that you want to be the front pop a little bit of wool underneath the hat so what we're doing here is we, we've got some nice fresh wool so we're going to push through the hat into that wool so that that tangles in with the pumpkin and attaches itself now, can you see, I'm not going in through lots of different places. I am putting the needle in one place and I'm just moving that needle up and down through the hat. It's not coming out of the hat. What I don't want to do is lose that gorgeous shape we've just created. So just keep working around just in one area and move it around the hat. And so through that wool, we're hitting that fresh wool we popped on. That's connecting with the hat, which is connecting with the pumpkin and all three parts are holding themselves together. And any holes you have created afterwards, you know, you can just tease out with your needle. But because we're doing it in a way that is, is causing minimal disruption, disruption, disruption to our hat we've created, um, you know, we, we won't see it. We won't even know where we've been in. And as you can see, I'm just pulling that wool where I've created those little holes with my needle and you don't even know that I've been through there. And that hat is now firmly attached. You can lift the, the, pumpkin, up, the pumpkin up by the hat and they won't separate. So that's as easy as it is to attach. It's not always like that when you, you needle felt. There's lots of different ways of attaching, but you'll see that in all my tutorials, all the different techniques. So we are going to create 
um, some lovely pointy ears and the pointy eared gnome tutorial shows you this as well so if you want to do the, just the pointy eared gnome without the pumpkin then again I'll pop a link in the description and you can pop over there and make one of those as well if you want so I've created a very rough triangle without a base and that allows us to fold over the edges where I've created that triangle shape and create again a neat finish did you notice when we, we did the same with the hat we rolled over the edges because that means we've not got any sort of fluffy wool sticking out it's all nice and neat and from there on we can just start working on this shape it's like a really simple sort of petal shape i'm working on my uh, my rice mat now which is a double-sided one because i'm going to do so i'm going to use my multi-tool needle just to show you how you can speed up the process but you can do this on the, the soft mat I was using before on a foam mat it can be the whole thing can be made on any mat really doesn't matter but when you're using um, a, a punch tool this is a this is a got two needles in this isn't the punch tool um, the punch tool has got several needles in it can have up to seven needles in I think this one's got five in and what it does is it really speeds up the process and gives a really neat finish. So that's why I'm using it, just to show you how quickly it can be done. If you're just making one or two, that's fine. If you're making lots of these as gifts or maybe you're selling them at craft fairs or displaying them at events, then I would definitely invest in, in a, a, a punch needle because it just is the big guns and it speeds the whole process up. So as you can see, I've made... A previous ear and I'm trying to match the two so that's what I'm going to do and always start with two pieces roughly the same and then make the, the ears that way don't make one ear and then pull off some wool make sure you've got sort of two pieces of wool to start with that are of similar um, shape size and bulk they won't be perfectly matched they never are it's almost impossible and then I'm just again, just teasing over those edges gently. This is a 38 needle I'm using. If I used a 40, it would bend too much. And then going back and using my punch tool just to really quickly get those fibers tangled together. We want a firm flat finish here because we want to be able to bend those ears into shape so that they will hold. Another one of the joys of working with wool that when it's firmly felted, it will really hold itself in position. Now, with the edges, I want these really firm and really neat. And because we're working on such a small piece, the chances are you are going to poke your fingers. So take a carded uh, piece of folded cardboard, or if you're using finger guards, that's fine. But use a folded piece of cardboard, squish that ear, and then just work along those edges. And this will give you a fabulously neat, firm finish. And then flip it over and do the same on the other side. And you can use this um, technique with the folded cardboard for so many different projects where your fingers are really close to that needle and you want to avoid poking them and you want to get a neat finish. So they're looking pretty good. Uh, very, very similar in shape and size. You can actually lay one on top of the other and do a comparison. And if there's anything that isn't quite right, then you can use that as your template to make sure that they're both pretty much the same. That's a really great technique. Nice and firm. And just, I'm just focusing on those points now because you really do want to see that point. And then take off any excess wool. We don't want any excess sort of at the bottom. We're not going to need it because this is going to be attached to the hat. The hat, the ears are going to poke sort of as if they're poking through the hat. And then just fold the base like a petal and where you folded it, just poke through with the needle a few times, just so it holds together. Just turn one side and do the other, and then repeat for the other ear. So it's just at the base. You're just pinching the base together and then just felting it so it holds. And now you can see how they are going to represent the gnome's ears. The nose is so easy to make. Again, we're going to work around the skewer. I'm using a kind of oatmeal here. You can use any cut sort of colour you want. Something not too bold because you don't want it to be in too much of a contrast to the, the rest of the pumpkin. You don't want to detract from it. It's supposed to sort of complement it. So I'm just folding 
a piece of this gorgeous oatmeal carded wool around the barbecue skewer, but I'm keeping the shape really compact. It doesn't, you know, with, with this pumpkin, which is sort of, I would say, apple size, this near this nose is going to be about maybe an inch long, if that. Um, but the trick is when you're doing it, don't felt the ends too much. Just work on the center because we want loose wool at the ends that we're going to use to attach to the pumpkin. And that again means that we're not spoiling the shapes of the pumpkin and the hat we've already created. And then just because you've really kept it nice and firm and tight and close to that barbecue skewer, just a little bit of felting just to shape it. Turn it around and work diagonally and do the same. It's so easy. It just takes, like I say, a, a, a few minutes, if that. And get rid of any lumps. You want a nice, smooth finish. So again, keep working diagonally. Keep turning. Until you are happy with that finish. And then just pop it off the skewer, as you can see. Those ends are nice and loose, which is exactly how we want them. Check the shape. Make sure you're happy with it. And then find the front of your pumpkin again. Hold the nose in the center. We're not going to felt into the, the, that part of the nose at all. We're going to take those loose fibers at the end and we're going to felt and kind of tuck them under the hat and under the nose as we do. So can you see that nose is sat right underneath that hat as close as you can get? See those loose parts of wool? I'm using those to attach those and then just give it a wiggle, make sure it's in the right position and make sure it's firmly attached. So we're not touching the front of that nose. I'm working around all those edges. We want that nose to be untouched because we don't want to see any marks. It's really simple to make, but it's important that we don't ruin the, the look of it. And then you can pinch it, you know, move it around a bit, just pull the hat over just until you are happy with the position. And I'm just working around that hat just to make sure any sort of stragglers are felted in. And as I said earlier, if you want to add the contrasting wool now onto the hat, you could do that as well. It's just, just as fine to do it that way. It makes absolutely no difference how you do it. Now we're going to attach the ears and um, you, you want them quite close to the base of the hat. You've got that loose wool at the end. Can you see we left that wool loose, felt that in, lay it flat. So ears facing down towards the hat and just felt in that loose wool. Focus on one area because we want it to narrow down towards the base. And that is exactly, I think, where I want it to be. Again, work to the front and narrow that base, push through, avoiding the hat outside of the ear area because we don't want to distort that. And then once you've done this side, go ahead and do the other side. The trick is getting it in the same place. It might take you a couple of, of attempts, just me also sometimes, but don't worry. So get the other ear on, get that in position. And once you've done that, I am now going to add some little feet. This is optional, but they do look blooming cute. I love these. And I'm using the same colour as I did for the hat, so they're matching. I've got one here done and I'll quickly show you how easy it is to make. Just like you did the nose, except longer, thinner, with a loose part at the end for the little sort of pointy gnome shoe. Almost like sort of an Aladdin's um, lamp kind of style that we're going for. Keep it really firm. As we said before, I'm just using this, this gorgeous um, colour that we used for the hat. So just felt that on once you've got it wrapped around a little bit. Exactly the same as you did with the nose, but it's going to be a lot thinner. So keep working along. It's probably going to be maybe, uh, again, an inch long, but you're going to keep both ends loose and one end really, um, you know, quite narrow so we can work the point into that. And then um, check against the other shoe. Make sure that they're roughly the same size. 
wrap a little bit more wool around to make sure that they're they're pretty much equal and then just continue to felt and then once that's nice and firmly done you can just pull that off the stick and we can attach it to the base of the pumpkin so what I've got here is that's going to be my pointy end so I'm just going to roll that with my um, finger that really sort of it firms it up and so you can bend it quite easily and then the other end I'm just going to pull that flat and loose because if we don't pull part of the wool flat we're going to end up with a lump underneath the pumpkin which is going to make it wobble about like a weeble if you remember weebles which I do gosh I love weebles um, but anyway as you can see with my other pumpkin here I've got those feet flat to the base so that loose wool not the firm wool the loose wool is what you're attaching you see how loose that is and that's important and going through the crease of the pumpkin and you want those feet to sit up towards the front if they're too far underneath you've kind of created a tipping point so they're going to tip backwards so really flatten that down there you go and you want it you know really wants to be quite loose you just want that flat wool felted check your position and then pop your other one on in the same way and you can sort of squish the pumpkin and move the gnome around when you stand it up if it's a, if it's wobbling one way or another. You know, again, that's really easy to do, but it just makes the job a lot easier if you do this with the feet to start with as well. And then just just point up those those little tips of the shoes. And I just think they add just a really nice element and it ties in with the hat. I just think it coordinates everything. So I'm going to go back to. Um, the other num that I did earlier, you can see I did the green around the base there. And we're now going to create the sort of the, the beautiful beard. Now I am using a yarn for this. You can use wool top, abs looks absolutely gorgeous. Just make sure you don't overdo it with the wool top. You want to make sure that the pumpkin is visible. So if you're using your wool top, just a little beard. You know, you want to be able to see the sides and the base of the um pumpkin but I just thought I, I really like this technique so I've just got some wool yarn here you could use nylon yarn as well it doesn't have to be pure wool and what I'm doing is I'm just I've taken a length and again it's a similar um sort of oatmeal-y white color and I'm just using my fingers to hold it in place as I felt it right under the nose which is where you want it and what I'm doing with this is I'm keeping it really loose so you're just folding it through around your finger and then up and under the nose now it's going to work out from the sides at the top it's going to be shorter at the top getting longer as it goes towards the center of the nose so you create that really nice shape that tapers down towards the center of the pumpkin work a layer around when you've done that you're going to work back again because we want two or three layers at least on this using this yarn because it really gives it some fantastic dimension and the overall finish really works. Um, it just gives a, a much, much better impression and you don't need a, a lot of yarn. As you can say here, you can use this wool top, but just make sure you keep it short and you keep it neat. and Don't lose your pumpkin. And as you can see, I'm just using my finger to create those little loops and push through and gradually, as you work towards the centre, a little bit longer. It's a bit fiddly, but it's not hard. Just take some time. Don't rush this bit. This is really, you know, this is the finish of your, your fabulous gnome, your gnome numpkin. So really spend some time on that. And then just lift those layers. And again, it's creating amazing dimension this is my new favorite project at the moment it will change next month but if you want to see more of my tutorials and there are a lot of them then just click the notification to make sure that you don't miss any tutorials have a look in the description you'll find all the links i mentioned and look in the christmas playlist which is jam-packed with festive projects for you happy felting <laughs>